Hey, good night, good night, good night. Welcome to Tuesday night Bible study as usual. I am so pleased to be able to see everybody tonight because we are going to be discussing something that is of great importance to our work here on earth in the kingdom of God, and that is money. Uh, as usual, before we get started, we're going to have a bit of a song and then a prayer. And then we get right into Tuesday night Bible study. Soon come. Shall we pray to the Lord? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen. The righteous run into it and they are saved. He's a mighty fortress. And if there are any issues, then he is a bridge over troubled waters. And his name is to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Hallelujah. Praise God indeed. The nature of God is that we are so blessed. Let us pray. Because as we go into this word, it is going to be a very difficult topic to discuss. Mostly because it's something that people tend not to want to discuss, which is about money and resources and uh, profit and uh, doing things business-wise. But it is something that people who are outside of the church community do all the time. And if it is that we want to build the kingdom of God, we must know some things about life and uh, how to build uh, resources so that we can do some things out in the atmosphere for our lives, our children, and the kingdom. But let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for giving us so much despite what we think we do not have. Assist us, dear God, to go through our lives with the great understanding of how you are so brilliantly great. Help us to understand this topic so that we can go out into the world and do the best that we can to serve in your kingdom as good stewards. Amen. So as you can imagine, we are the Hellshire United Church. And this is our Tuesday night Bible study. You may be seeing this on YouTube or you may be seeing it on Facebook. If it is on Facebook or YouTube and you're streaming in live, then to the side that I'm pointing, there's a live chat area that you can type in your questions. You can also just comment and uh, message us back in relation to things that you may be seeing or wanting to ask questions of. We will write back to you in there. Below us, if you're on your phone device. Also, if it is that you need some information about how to get in touch with us, you can DM us on the Facebook platform or also on Instagram. But the information is also streaming periodically at the bottom of the screen. So, all protocols observed. Let us get into this topic because it's a topic that is so fascinating. But... We will try to be as detailed but as brief with it as possible. The first thing we want to concentrate for this week is something from Psalm 113. Now, the psalmists tended to always concentrate a lot on praising God or talking about things in relation to God and what he can do for our lives, despite the issues that we face. So let us hear our sister as she goes into this psalm and then reflect on it a little bit right after that. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. So the first thing we need to understand, thank you, my sister, for reading those verses, is that God is one who assists to vindicate those who may be having some difficulties. We tend to see God as this far-off kind of person who um, we either, we, which is twofold wrong. Either we reach out to him at the times when we have our difficulties, which is wrong. He's God. You should talk to him and communicate with him at all times. Or two, we run into the issues that we face and then we see him far off in two ways again. Either because we think when we have the difficulty, he has forgotten us and doesn't love us anymore. Or we feel shamed about something that we have done. 
and then we try to stay away from God or we, we feel bad about not communicating with him. But God understands our needs. He wants to talk to us. He wants to help us with the issues that we face. And so if it's something that is relational, emotional, mental, physical, like an illness, social, and financial, which is what we're talking about tonight. He wants to hear about it. He wants to hear from you. He wants to come into an understanding of where you are and what you need assistance with. So know that. And know that God is not some far-off person uh, that you should be unsure of. And Psalm 113 states very clearly that when we bless the name of the Lord and know that he is the one who allows the sun to go up and come back down, that we understand that the things in heaven and earth are his. So even those who have their financial difficulties, even those who maybe in the verse it says needy, you'll see it in verse 7. God finds a way to come into the very natures of the things that we have and possess and set us amongst princes. It says princes there. But imagine that Jesus himself is the son of God, the savior of the world. So who else to go to and figure out life with than the prince of the entire earth, the master of the universe, right? And there's another phrase there, which I'm going to point to very, very quickly. That says in verse 9, he make it the barren woman to keep house and to be joyful mother of children. Children was always in the older days, a kind of, a, you know, duty stamp for women, a kind of a exclamatory um, expression of God being great, uh, doing something for them and them being grateful and them showing something in the community and bringing out legacy for their family and their husband, right? And it's kind of the same currently, but we should know, please, that if you are a female out there and you're having difficulty with child having children or have not had one yet, or even been in a long-standing relationship to be married, that does not define you. Your career doesn't define you. Your relational life, or if you're married, does not define you. And if you have a, a big bank account or not, it doesn't define you. And also, another sort of barrenness is this, if you have children or not, it does not define you. What defines you is the God of the earth who is king of the earth and king of you, who has placed his image on you. You are his imago Deo. And you have worth and meaning already because of that. Plus, each of us are unique in our own way, allowing us to bring forth something into the earth that is uh, talented, that brings forth from our personality, that has some sort of purpose, that calls us to some sort of calling. And so when you look in the Bible, there are so many instances of people who, you know, people looking out would have thought they were barren. Sarah was thought as such, Abraham's wife, but she birthed Isaac, who eventually birthed the rest of the nations of Israel, whose line carried into Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Samson's uh, mother was thought at once to be barren. Samuel's mother, Anna, was thought at once to be barren. And so forth and so forth. We come upon points where God uses, oh, I wanted to listen close to what I'm saying, this supposed feeling of lack or the supposed uh, thing where we're not going to bring forth something to glorify his name in the earth. But he takes the time to make it come to 
person to bring forth so that he can show that it is through him that it's done how else could it have been done if something seems impossible or almost not likely sarah herself laughed when an angel came and said next year this time you'll have a child but if it seems impossible and then somehow it breaks forth God is going to use that to reveal himself and bring forth the truth of who he is. And if you're feeling some sort of barrenness in your life or lack or feeling of an unwanted stage of not showing that God is there, know that he's probably putting you in a kind of stagnant, quote-unquote, a freeze, quote-unquote, a kind of waiting stage so that over time you will mature some things will start to happen to you and then you will glorify god with the fullness of something that he was allowing you to build up to to get to his glory he does it all the time i listed about three examples and so we also get this sort of lamentation from jeremiah because of how the people of Israel had their issues and there was a feeling of a, a, you know, a kind of distorted way of how things were. And he looked at God knowing, as we just said, that he's somebody who can bring some fullness, some healing, some measure of greatness into our lives. But he wasn't seeing it. So his exclamation was, is there no bomb in Gilead? In the olden days, you know, that was the place where they could get some nice salves and uh, things that they could put on your body and uh, for your life to make you have good health. And uh, it was almost as if there was nothing going on. So Jeremiah had to cry out and ask God for it. But before we get into more, uh, details of that let us actually hear our sister as she um, goes through the one or two of those bible verses when i would comfort myself against sorrow my heart is faint in me oh that my head were waters and my eyes were a fountain of tears that i might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people Oh, that such things could happen for me, you probably are saying. Oh, that the very nature of God could re be revealed in my life. Oh, that the resources that I have could be more. Oh, that I could get a job. Oh, that the very nature of life can present itself that I have some more finances. Isn't that the cry of the world sometimes? That we don't have quite what we know we can have. And uh, that's basically the cry here. But it was in relation to the fact that there was so much destitute, desolate, kind of uh, unsure angst in the society of Israel at the time. But the next verse in verse 20 Sorry, in, in chapter 9, verse 1, but let me read verse 20 of Jeremiah 8 first. It says, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. So it seems like there is a long time. Remember, we're talking about that when we're referencing Psalm 113 and barrenness. It seems as if, you know, the fall period is gone, summer is gone, a whole year, and, you know, we should be reaping something here right now, but nothing is happening. We are hurt. And there's an astonishment about us. Where, where is the things that we, we know are possible in you, God? Where are they? What's happening? Why can't we see it? That was basically what Jeremiah was saying here. And then he goes into another part that says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. So there was violence in the land. There was lack, desolation. 
there was a lot of unsure feelings in terms of things and a feeling of barrenness. But then, God did eventually bring them out of that stage of where they were. The problem is, as I mentioned first, is that it takes time. But what you should remember and understand is that in the leading up to that time is when your faith is tested oh, so that you stay grounded in God enough that when you do reach to the point when he breaks through, you will remember and say, but this was Jesus all this time. This was Jesus, and I didn't know it. This was Jesus teaching me some things. This was Jesus allowing me to see some things that I could not see. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Are you feeling some lack in your finances right now? Are you feeling some sort of uh, depression over not having as much as you hope you could? Are you seeking a job? Are you trying to find your way career-wise? Watch what Amos says here before we get more into um, a discussion on that. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn? And the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat? The Lord hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. So Amos cries out here for the needy, for those who seem to have some sort of lack, who are down and out. And his words were these. I want you to concentrate very carefully. That it says here, that the ephah was small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by a deceit. So he was from the country area, this Amos. And those who were doing their thing in the townships and selling and buying, they unfortunately had an off a way where they were doing it in an unjust or uh, bad manner. A kind of a shrewd injustice for people who were of lesser value or had less resources. So everything was unbalanced. What I highlighted there was the phrase that they falsified the balances by deceit. And then he goes into the fact that God will never forget any of their works. Can you imagine where you have reached a stage so much that somebody starts to buy you into servitude? Those are the type of phrases that you're seeing there. Or the very value of what you have because you need to get wheat and corn you have to barter or exchange instead of the money that you have. That is the terminology and the things that are being used here. You have so little that you're trying to figure out how it is that you're going to get something out of the land that you have if you're doing something agricultural. Because it seems unjust. It seems as if nothing is pushing into getting some things for you. But what this bit of Amos promises us and shows us very clearly is that God is your vindicator. And God is the one who is able 
to allow you to push forward towards where it is that you need to understand some things about life and about the financial or resourcefulness of the things that you have. And if it is that you stay steady in him, don't do what the world does around you and do deceitful things. Don't do what the world does around you and uh, leave the poor and the needy in, in a kind of unjust, um, unsure state. Don't do what the world does and falsify some things to get some gain or to get the things of this life. Don't do what the world does and uh, devour the needy and, you know, swallow up the poor, as verse 4 of Amos was saying. Use your intellect. And as Jesus has commanded us to do many times throughout the Old and the New Testament, is to be a good steward so that the very nature of the things that you do will glorify his name. There is much in the supposed little that you... Listen close to what I'm saying. There is much in the supposed little that you have. God used barrenness to show the impossibility of uh, having children past a certain age in many women. God used a reduced amount of people in an army to defeat larger thousands of people to show that he is the God who is in charge of everything and is your strength and also your shield and your defense. So do you not think that he can also do some things in the monetary financial aspects of your life? Know this. Know the God that you serve. But also, which is where we're going to get to next, know the ways of the world so that you can not be crafty or shady, please, but that you can do some things in it resource-wise and be good stewards to do something for yourself, for your community, for your family and the kingdom of God. Now, let us hear this thing about this unjust <laughs> manager. Uh, some Bible verses call it the shrewd manager that Jesus gives this parable about. And I'm pretty sure we're going to learn some things from it in terms of finances and how to do some things. Let's hear from our sister again. And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man, which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. And he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and write four score. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful as also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? 
and ye and if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon so god teaches us a few things very quickly about money that there's nothing wrong with it it's how we think about it and how we use it that may be the problem next week we'll get into a little bit about what um, one of the apostles called um all kinds of evil which is the love of money that is the problem money is not the problem it is the love of it and jesus let's get into this very quickly jesus decides to give a master class here by talking about a steward he's giving a parable and two or three things pop out very quickly as the morals of the story one we just said it a while ago you cannot serve two things so if you are from god it, it's in verse 13 and if you are from god and you're trying to do things the way of the world you're going to end up in problems either trying to run you know the jamaican phrase run down the money or we're trying to gain as much wealth as possible without thinking of the consequences of it or we're gonna end up doing some things in some unrighteous ways right so he's saying you cannot love both of them at the same time it's either god or the money mammon is this term that is used here that means wealth or uh, riches jesus calls it unrighteous mammon not because as i said money or wealth or riches is incorrect or wrong or evil but the term mammon is used in the sense of the, the usage of it in an incorrect way there's actually references to the fact that there is actually a spirit or a demon whose name is mammon who dwells over some things like that in relation to resources and money on the earth and why not because this entire earth runs and moves and fashions itself of the movement of the dollars and the coins nothing that i have here using to stream in i gave without paying for it i have a camera and a laptop and a mic and a light that is projecting on my face and uh, uh, the, the, what i'm using here is something that um has to go into the internet which has other things which have payments for so everything here is running off the movement of money but what we're doing here is so this is a simple analogy so what we're doing here is sharing some knowledge about god and talking and having a discourse so please remember if you have any questions put it in the chat if you're um on your computer if you're on your your phone it's somewhere down here and we will answer right away good night everybody who is on and i hope you're enjoying this study as well as um you know just searching through the verses as we go through them so remember if i am here doing these things and we're sharing and we're talking and we're discoursing about this then that's glorifying god that's talking about the things of god that's helping people to understand themselves and how they deal with their finances right but suppose and please <laughs> i'm making a joke or just trying to make an analogy don't take me seriously suppose i was to come on and then i start to say uh let me let me say something weird um like i have um i I, I need you to give me some money immediately or else something bad will happen to you tomorrow or so I've heard people say these things so it, and you have to be careful I mean when you're in the vigor and the energy of trying to do some things for God right obviously if you provide a service you expect to to get something for it or to get some assistance to continue whatever it is that you're doing 
but please don't do it in a in a sort of deceitful or unfortunately bad or disgusting way that's not how it's done the next point that we see here is um is god says this in verse 11 if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches and if you are not being faithful in that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own so apart from the fact that it's not the money that is evil so we use it then god is also showing the long-term goal of us knowing these things he's going to set us as stewards and managers over bigger things in heaven the eternal things so if we can't manage the little things here which are one temporal and two smaller than what we're going to get when we get to heaven then why should he even want to trust you with that or allow you to be a steward of that? And also, if it is that we are here and nothing here is ours, <laughs> it's owned by God. And also, we come into things that more than likely not all of us will be like business owners or do some things on our own behalf, but we're working on behalf of somebody else. If we're not good where we are stewarding and doing it to the best of our abilities for that person or that company or that entity why do we think that if we move on to another stage of our lives with something else or worse get up to jesus that we will be seen and presumed to be able to manage those other things we there are stages to this thing there's thinking and mindsets to this thing. If you have the same wrong mindset, you'll move into the next situation with the same wrong mindset. If you move into a certain way thinking about how you may be lacking, even if you have more, you may look at it incorrectly as well. If I, and I'm saying I, not by saying I, but presuming that you're talking to yourself. If you look at yourself and say, well, I'm not making that much Currently, you know, so maybe I shouldn't give to the poor or maybe I shouldn't help out this organization or maybe I shouldn't give some tithes at church. Do you think that when you do get some more money, you will all, all of a sudden say, well, I have more money so I can always give? No, most times it doesn't happen because your mindset hasn't been lodged to understand the concept of the giving while you have the little. So when you come to that knowledge of how the reciprocity of life happens and when you allow what you have to give out of the little of it when you grow and you mature maybe you earn some more money or you build up your career you will also think the same way and want to give more so start from now from the little that you think you have just give it may not be monetary that's the next thing which i'm coming to but find ways to give off yourself your time your talent and your treasure this one is very specific to treasure but there's another parable that jesus gives about three men who he gave talents which was a kind of form of monetary user in the day as well but we can easily make the analogy to say that it is in reference to the things that we possess our capabilities and our abilities he gave one five one two one one the two that got the more than the less actually did double with what they had when the manager came back. The analogy, of course, was that the manager was Jesus, which is the same analogy which is being given in this parable which we're referencing about the unjust manager. But the one who had won decided that, and this is the, the weird part of it, he said to Jesus, I know that you are a, a hard man, that you reap and take from what you did not even put in as yet so i decided that i would be fearful and hide the one talent so that at least i would still have it which is a kind of fearful way of looking at your existence remember you can get something out of life Rem he said to the man but that was kind of lazy wasn't it and slothful why didn't you at least put it in the bank so it could get some interest and build up some credit and do some things in your environment so that you could do something in your life don't be fearful with money please it is not something that will stay 
if you want to try to do some things in life, you will fail. I can guarantee you that. Because I have failed at many business-related stuff before. But I've also been successful at many. And that's because I learned what Jesus is saying to us here. That over time, not only will we mature and gain more knowledge of how to use it, but you have to do it his way, which is to not be fearful or doubtful of what you can do. And trust that once you put it out into the environment and you build upon it and try to do it in a just way with those who are around you, that over time, something will come out of it and you will get something for the kingdom of God. The next thing, which you see how many points comes out of this one little parable. One, it's not the money, it's how you use it. Don't trust the mammon, trust the fact that you have to be just with it. Two, you have to ensure that the very nature of your faithfulness with the little that you have matures enough so when you get the big things, you're obviously going to be faithful there as well. And then you must also realize that the grace of God will give you something brilliant in eternity. So God is looking at you to be good stewards with the temporal smaller things that you have. So when the true permanent eternal riches come, you will find your way into God's grace. And the fourth thing I want to bring out here is that the steward, you know, was kind of very slothful, just like the other analogy I was giving with the parable of the talents. And he, he had persons who owed his master, but he wasn't going out doing the barter and the, you know, the, the stewardship and the back and forth and the selling and the buying to ensure that whatever was there brought a harvest or reaped something. He went to one who owed a hundred and after his master kind of draped him up and said, what was going on here? Can we not get something out of this? And then he said, all right. We have 100 here. Can I get 50 from it? He said this to one person. And then to another, he said, okay, you have 100 on your bill here. Can we get four score? Four score is four times 20, which is 80. So, you see how simple this is? Somebody owes you a certain amount of money. And you realize very clearly that he does not have the full amount, he or she. Are you going to run them down still for the full amount without going to some sort of partnership or um, agreement to at least come to some smaller amount of it, but at least make some payment? Or even what the banks do, which is where they make interest payments over time so that it builds up still and you still get the amount that was owed. Know the ways of the world, said Jesus, because, um, let me project it to show you what he says, because, and the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world, done wisely, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. I say unto you, make to yourself friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting Habitations. So, people of this world know how to run up and down and make sales and do work and make some things move. You know? Because, unlike us who sometimes have this thing where we think money, whoa, we have to run away from it, or we can't deal with the money because we worry that we're going to get into problems. They don't. And they run and do some things in the environment and barter and sell. Please. If you have some talent or you're thinking of doing some business or you're trying to fulfill some things in your career, know that you have the abilities and know that you can do some things with God. Be a good steward. And know this also, that there is one mediator between God and man, and that is the one, Jesus Christ. Let's hear from our sister again. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in sight of God our Savior, 
who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. So God ransomed you. And if it is that he had to pay the highest price to get you, why is it that we're worried about some of the things in this life? When the prince of the earth, the God of all the universe, he was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. 30, I don't even know what that translates to in uh, modern times. But can you imagine what is the most priceless thing in the entire universe being traded for that? Yet we are worried about going around and doing some of the things in our lives to reach to where we need to go to. Know that you have the abilities, please. And know that as the Apostle Paul is saying to his protege, Timothy here, that God has saved you to the knowledge of truth, that he will do some things on behalf of you. He is the mediator still for your sins. And you have to use your faith and trust in him so much that you continue to be godly and honest in your dealings. But that you are also not afraid or fearful as you go out into the world to do what God has commanded you to do. Now, if that is you and you have a little bit of an issue with that, we can pray for you tonight. If that is you and what we have said to you tonight about doing it God's way in terms of resources and money, you can also pray with us tonight. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the gift of life, for the ability to find our ways despite what we can see. Help us to move towards the greatness of you. I believe that you are the son of God and you died on our behalf and are still the mediator for us. Help us to be changed and renewed, to be just and merciful and godly and honest. And do the things that you would want us to do on your behalf. Amen. Let's say a general prayer. Lord Jesus, we have so many people who have some issues sometimes with the things of this world. Help them to understand who they are so that they are not afraid to do what they can with the little, supposed little, that they have. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for coming on. We are the Hillshire United Church. I am Brother Johnny Alcock. We are a congregation of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. This is our Facebook page. And our IG page is ACUCJM. Our email is HillshireUnitedChurch at Yahoo.com. Our telephone number is 876-665-6513. If it is that you want to find your way to God, know that that is all you need. And find your way to talk to somebody about some things in this life. And listen to this quick bit of uh, singing and then we'll come right back. All the time.
Hallelujah. Watch this now. So, when it is that we meet next week, we will be discussing similar things about money and we'll go to the reference of what we were talking about earlier tonight from Timothy, which says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. We know many stories about persons who may not have, you know, managed the money and stewarded it as best as they could. And so we get into so many issues. So let's discuss some of those things next week. Please, thank you so much for coming on to our Bible study tonight. Remember, you can be a good steward. Just follow some of the things in relation to justice and mercy, forgiveness, kindness. Um, don't leave yourself slothful like the person with the one talent and thinking he had nothing to do with it. Or like that unjust steward who then was commended because he went out and started to bart and do some things out in the environment. You have abilities. Do what you can with God. And be awesome in life. You know, just doing the best that you can with your qualifications, your career, your businesses, and all the things that you want to do resource-wise for yourself and for the kingdom of God. Blessings. Later, everybody.